We're going to be getting started in just a little bit. Okay, I'm admitting everyone. I would like just to take a moment and welcome everyone to today's Tech Tuesday training. We will be getting started in maybe just two minutes. We can give some folks uh, some time to trickle into the meeting or the presentation. Thank you for joining us today. For those joining on Facebook, please know that we won't be readily available to view the live Facebook. Uh, we have put the link to register for the Zoom meeting in the Facebook event. So if you'd like to access cart captioning and ASL interpreting, you can do so uh, by joining the Zoom registration link and join us here in Zoom. And give it maybe just two more minutes. Okay, we'll just give it another minute. Um, we have someone joining from the UK. Welcome and thank you for joining in. It is absolutely okay. All right, I'll go ahead and get started. And uh, Asian, if you want to keep an eye on the waiting room and what's happening in chat, that would be super. So I'd like to start with welcoming everyone to this Tech Tuesday training uh, on this July 12th. This is AT for low vision, and uh, I am your presenter for today, Kelly Blackwell. I'm co-director of the Michigan Assistive Technology Program. I'm also an avid user of assistive technology. Uh, the image on this slide is an abstract artistic image of, uh, I think it's a three, three eyeballs. Um, so I am a person with a vision impairment and use a screen reader. So if I pause periodically throughout the presentation, it's likely because I have my screen reader giving me some uh, direction, whether I want it or not, in my ear. <laughs> All right. So as I mentioned, I'm Kelly Blackwell, co-director of the Michigan Assistive Technology Program. I will be your main presenter for today. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I identify as a white woman. Um, and I am, as I mentioned, a person with a vision impairment and use a screen reader. So many of the devices and strategies and things that we are going to be talking about today I use on a regular basis. Uh, and almost all, if 
not all of the items that we are going to be discussing today we have available in our inventory for our lending library. And I have got a uh, chat moderator today with me, Asian A. Thomas, and I will let Asian A introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Um, my name is Asian A. Thomas, and I am the Youth Assistive Technology Specialist um, at Michigan Disability Rights Coalition. And um, today I am wearing a purple blouse. Um, I have glasses and I am a person of color with black braids in my hair. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to describe. I'm wearing uh, what I believe to be or hope to be a black and white top. I hope I didn't use my color identifier today, so hopefully I'm looking <laughs> all right. <laughs> and all right. the image on the slide is an image of three light bulbs and the logo MDRC. Thank you. All right, so we all are probably very used to this Zoom uh, song and dance with uh, sort of the housekeeping of virtual space. Uh, so we've just got some ways for you to participate today. If you'd like, you are absolutely welcome to use the chat as folks have been doing. Uh, if you'd like to raise your hand, you can do so virtually. Uh, you can also unmute your microphone, and we do ask that if you are not speaking, that you please do have your microphone muted, uh, so there's uh, the least amount of interruption for the presentation. If you are an adaptive software user, uh, you can use the key commands Alt-H to access the chat, and Alt-H will then get you back out of the chat. Uh, it's what's known as a toggle. Um, alt Y is the virtual raise your hand feature. And then Alt um, A is for mute and unmute. And then if you'd like to share your video screen, it's Alt V as in Victor. Um, so those are just some basic housekeeping. Uh, we do have cart captioning available today. And to access that, the captioner has put a link in the chat. Um, but if you want to uh, interact or get those working for you, um, cart captioning is available by pressing the CC option. And visually, I can't describe that. So maybe Asian A, if you want to just describe that. And I'm hoping that our ASL interpreter has been able to join, but we do have that available as well. Currently, our ASL interpreter has not been able to join, um, but to turn on your closed captioning at the bottom of the screen, um, there is a box that says CC in it, and it has live transcript. Um, and then there's an arrow on the right of that area, and you can turn on um, the closed captioning setting. Thank you. All right, so hopefully we'll get those um, ASL interpreter on soon. And when the ASL interpreter does join, um, they will be pinned to the screen. So, all right, we'll go ahead and move forward to the next slide. Uh, this slide has our mission uh, and the, our mission is something that we are very proud of as an agency. So MDRC is um, the larger organization that the Michigan Assistive Technology Program is a part of. And MDRC cultivates disability pride and strengthens the disability movement by recognizing disability as a natural and beautiful part of, sorry, by recognizing disability as a beautiful part, beautiful and natural part of um, diversity. Sorry, and I'm stumbling through this because <laughs> listening to my screen reader. While collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression. 
And at the top right of the screen is an outline of the state of Michigan, which is what we cover the entire state and our logo, Michigan Disability Rights Coalition on top. And at the bottom it says Michigan Assistive Technology Program. Thank you, Adrienne. All right, so a basic overview of what assistive technology is. So assistive technology is basically any device, piece of equipment, software program. It's going to help make things possible for folks with disabilities to be able to do the things that they want to be able to do. Uh, and what we often say in the program is that technology, so if you think of using your smartphone just as a phone or using your computer, that's technology. So technology can often make things easier for most people. However, assistive technology opens up possibilities for individuals with disabilities as well as older adults. And then the images on this slide are of a daily pill organizer that is a multicolor um, product. And then there's an older individual who is using their walker, walking outside on what appears to be a sunny day, and then uh, a doorknob gripping device. And these I would say are uh, more simplified basic items for AT. And so what the assistive technology program does, first of all, as Asian A mentioned, we serve the entire state of Michigan. We are a federally funded program and each state as well as a handful of territories has an assistive technology program. And the basic idea behind these programs are to increase access to and knowledge of assistive technology options. So we welcome you after today's training to um, give us a call, contact us, ask your questions about assistive technology. Um, we'd love to provide a demonstration uh, for you. So if you see something of interest today, or if you simply have questions about other types of assistive technology, chances are um, we have, you know, we have quite a bit of things in our inventory. So, um, the demonstrations, there is no charge to participate. We can conduct demonstrations both virtually as well as in person. Uh, folks are more than welcome to come to our main hub in East Lansing, or we will come to you as long as you are in the state of Michigan. Um, as it was briefly discovered at the start of this webinar, we actually have someone joining from the UK. We so appreciate your participation, but unfortunately, we're not able to travel to the UK to provide a demonstration. But I'd be more than happy to get you connected to resources in your area. So um, we do trainings like we are doing today. We bring awareness and we do some technical assistance for folks too. So if you have any questions about the program, don't hesitate to type them in the chat, um, unmute your microphone or send us an email. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next slide. All right, so what to expect for today's Tech Tuesday. We're gonna talk very briefly about some common vision uh, issues some very basic AT, types of magnification options that are available, making sure that you choose the best option for what your needs are. We're gonna talk about some adaptive software options, um, what you might find on your tablets, smartphones, and through different apps. And we're gonna talk about AT for identification purposes. And there will be time to ask questions as well as uh, different resources and ways to find information. And then the image on this slide is of a notebook that has writing that says today, one, two, three, and four. All right, I'm gonna move to the next slide. All right, so here are just some common vision issues. Um, and I'll just say that here at MDRC and the AT program, we're not focused on the medical model of disability. So um, I'm not gonna talk in great length about 
vision conditions, medically speaking. So for example, I technically have retinitis pigmentosa, but I'm not so concerned about the technical terms for vision issues. So we have here um, some things that folks can experience are color blindness, central vision loss, and that could be a total loss of central vision or if things simply look a little more blurry from central vision. Um, peripheral vision loss, which means um, the outer edges of your vision, uh, you might experience um, challenges with. Uh, and night blindness, uh, you might experience or know of folks who experience that. It, I think tends to come up with night driving. Um, folks seem to recognize that pretty often, I would say. And then just overall blurry vision. Uh, and then the image on this slide is of an artistic view of an eye. The image colors include dark blue, red, orange, and white, I believe is what it said. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the next. Well, actually, before I move to the next slide, an agent is going to put a question in the chat. And before we move into specific types of AT, I'm curious to know what types of AT have you already heard of as it relates to low vision? Or if you so feel inclined, um, what types of AT do you yourself use for low vision? And what are your favorite types of AT? So I'll just give folks a moment to interact. If you don't feel comfortable interacting with chat, JAWS and Zoom, okay, and those Zoom. are two uh, screen, um, and I said screen, but I meant to say software. Those are two software programs, and Asia, I'm going to be quiet and let you read the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dawn said, high contrast pictures, low tech, and iPad. Um, Tim uses AD tracks for video. Um, Aaron uses audiobooks and Siri. Awesome. Some great ideas. Thank you everyone for sharing. Uh, so we certainly have. Mary mentioned um, that they've mentioned to clients, scanners, electronic viewers, JAWS, Zoom, or is it, is that Zoom? Or Zoom. Is it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Jordan, um, I have a client who uses the My Eyes app and uses the services of a local chapter of Bureau of Services for blind persons for training. They come to a school sometimes too. Great. Thanks, right. Mary. <laughs> Zoom. Yeah. Uh, and Samantha, the Seeing AI app. Yes, we're going to talk about that. Uh, so some great mentions here. We're going to start out slow and work our way up to what I say is kind of some more high tech, um, fancier options. Another, <laughs> um, another suggestion or thing that they've heard of, uh, Marilyn, Google maps to walk around a new city. Yeah. Do you use that Marilyn or you've just heard of that? And Charles um, says, nice to, okay, Marilyn uses the Google Maps to walk around. It's cool. Nice. Um, Charles uh, says, nice to meet you all virtually. I'm an expert in digital accessibility if anyone would like to connect. Thanks, Charles. Perfect. Thank you, Charles. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide. And as I said, we're gonna start out kind of slow and basic and move our way up to what I refer to as the fancier options. I love to point out to folks that you don't always need the fancier options to get some really good use out of AT. Um, if you're new to vision loss or you know someone that's new to vision loss, bump dots are a great introductory piece of AT. 
These are tactile dots that come in many shapes, sizes, and colors that have um, a sticky back to them. So what I typically do is wipe down the surface. So if you think of a microwave that's flat panel or a dishwasher that has a flat panel, because it seems as though all of the newer digital options have all flat panel surfaces. Um, so then the bump dot, depending on the shape, size and color the individual chooses can give a tactile way for that individual to then interact with that flat panel surface. So before I had my fancier microwave, um, I used bump dots on my microwave and I placed the bump dot on the quick start option. I also have them on my washer and dryer. Um, and those don't even actually technically have to be bump dots. And I like to share this story. And for those of you that know me have probably heard the story, <laughs> but uh, when I first moved into my newer home, I've been there for almost two years now, um, I couldn't find where I packed my bump dots and I really needed to do laundry. And my sister just happened to have, uh, she's very crafty and had these glittery bling kind of, um, things that she uses for um, like scrapbooking and things. So she, so I have actually rhinestone, like blingy, glittery <laughs> bump dots on my washer and dryer and it works perfectly. So if you're into crafting, that's another use of some crafting materials. Um, large print can be in uh, somewhat easier low tech fix for someone with low vision. Bold writer pens, that's essentially a Sharpie that doesn't bleed through the paper. Um, lighting can make all the difference. So, um, you know, is it LED? Is it a desk lamp? Is it a reading lamp? Is it natural light? Those are all things that you can explore that are easily, uh, things that are a little more readily available, I should say. Talking clocks and watches, so more basic AT. So a lot of us probably carry um, our cell phones around with us and have access to getting the time and things. And I will talk about the built-in features for those things. But um, if you don't want to be carrying your cell phone around or don't have access to that kind of technology just yet, basic clocks and watches are a great way to um, get some introductory access to AT. And then medication reminders and organizers. Um, there's ways that you can organize, have large print, different colors. If you don't experience color blindness, um, have a talking system that is used. So those are just some basic AT options. And I forgot to ask the question, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say the image. Um, the image on the screen is a clock um, that is yellow and gray, and it is a verbalized clock, um, and it has the time and the temperature at the top and the date. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and then, Adrienne, if you could go ahead and put in the chat if you haven't done so already. I forgot to ask the question. Is there anything that folks would want for me to go over today before I go any further. Um, are there questions that you have about specific AT different things? So if you wanna just keep that coming in the chat, I'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. All right, I'm gonna take just a moment to go over the differences between a functional assessment that one might get from an eye doctor or a vision rehab teacher versus a demonstration because they're gonna be quite different. Um, so also under the AT Act, um, we do demonstrations, not assessments. Um, a functional assessment is something a little more formal, sometimes a lot more formal. Um, that can include a vision test by an eye doctor, 
and they might go over um, visual field information, uh, near and distance testing, and lighting and glare testing. And as I mentioned, it might include a type of exam from a vision rehab teacher, which is typically a master's level degree that someone holds um, and is able to provide vision rehab teaching under that degree. And then the graphic on this slide is of an, a person participating in a vision exam from an eye doctor. And we'll move on to the next slide. All right, so a demonstration differs in that it's not going to be an assessment, uh, and it's typically uh, you are going to be the one that decides, okay, this works for me. And not to say that you can't do that in an assessment, but it's just a less formal um, environment. Uh, and as demonstrators, we will provide suggestions on everyday ways on how to use the item. Uh, we don't necessarily, or not necessarily, we don't promote one product over another. Um, we can provide information on how to locate different eye doctors and different resources um, if someone is having difficulty with that. Um, and then we provide uh, information on different funding sources on how to cover the cost of uh, different devices. And then what the person likes uh, best is always considered. Um, and the image on this slide is of a large magnifier that's a hands-free magnifier that's positioned over an open book. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. All right, so um, just like anything else, it seems there are many considerations to think about when looking at different magnification. Uh, so there's probably even more than what I've listed here on this slide. But some examples of different styles of magnification are handheld and stand magnifiers. So when I think of handheld, I sort of think of that image of Sherlock Holmes in the detective, like holding up a magnifier. Um, whereas a stand magnifier is going to be similar, but to get the effective use out of a stand magnifier, that magnification is intended to stay flat on the surface in which you're trying to magnify. So if you had a flyer in front of you, for an example, you wouldn't hold that stand magnifier off the page because the image would then look distorted. It's meant to stay flat on the surface. Uh, and then you have bar magnifiers and page size magnifiers. Again, with the bar magnifiers, they typically go flat on the surface. Otherwise, you're going to notice some distortion. Um, so with bar magnifiers, it typically um, magnifies one line at a time. And then the page magnifiers magnify one entire page at a time. And page magnifiers are typically something that you could even pick up at a bookstore. Um, you generally don't get a lot of magnification and we're gonna talk about why that is here in just a little bit. But with page size magnifiers, it's just gonna give you a little bit of a boost uh, with magnification. And then um, video magnification is another option. And uh, with video magnifiers, you can have both handheld and desktop. And what that means is if you have a handheld, it's kind of the size of a, a digital camera or a smartphone, a little bit thicker. Um, and then with the desktop, it's not really intended to be portable, although they do make portable versions but you get more of uh, a computer size monitor sized um, viewing area. And the handheld is something that you can throw in a backpack or a purse or something like that. 
And video magnifiers have more features. So you can change color contrast. You can make the magnification larger or smaller. So going back to the handheld and stand magnifier options, you generally only have one size magnification. So it could be a three times magnifier, four, five, six, and so on. With the video magnifier, you have the ability to change magnification. Um, for example, the handheld video magnifier we have available for loan is two times to 20 times magnification. Um, and there's obviously a difference in cost when you're talking about um, a handheld versus a video magnifier, and it's quite significant. However, if you want a few more bells and whistles, or if you know that your vision is not stable and you're not going to know what size magnification you're going to need at some point, it might be worthwhile to get a video magnifier. And then these options also come with or without lighted options. And then there are um, magnification software and apps, which we'll talk a little bit more as we go along. And then uh, the images on this slide are of a bar magnifier that has a light built in, a handheld page magnifier, and then the um, magnification settings on an iPhone. All right, I am going to pause for just a moment and see if there are any questions. And I'm gonna get a sip of water here. <laughs> The ASL interpreter has joined and I added um, Elizabeth as a spotlight. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, we'll go ahead and move on. Hearing no questions. All right, so speaking specifically about magnification, you may have seen um, or heard folks talk about diopter, and I'm probably saying that incorrectly, <laughs> or you might see 4D as illustrated on the slide. The diopter is the amount of curvature in a lens, and typically the more curvature, the more magnification and the less viewing area. It's probably one of the most asked questions I get is, well, I need a lot of magnification and I want a larger viewing area. Typically with handheld options, the more magnification you need, the smaller viewing area you're going to have. So you may consider at that point moving to talking products or looking at a video magnification option. So, and then I give examples on this slide. So 4D, four diopter is one times magnified and 20D equals five times magnified. And then the image on this slide is of curved lines, um, zero to 15. Um, zero shows no curve and 15 shows a high amount of curve. All right, so I'm moving on to the next slide and it's important to figure out for you um, what you feel will work best for you. So here are some things to consider when making those decisions. What do you need it for? Is it going to be um, something that needs to be portable or something that's going to remain at home? Uh, so is it something that you're gonna to wanna to throw in your backpack or your purse or your pocket? Um, do I need to have something at home? Is magnification the best or do I need to move to maybe some talking options? Uh, that was a little bit of a hard transition for me um, when I moved from using magnification to using um, audio. Um, Interestingly, I am someone that would describe themselves as a visual learner. So going through that transition of um, really learning to listen to that audio and have my brain respond in a way that really made sense for me, it was definitely a transition. But um, 
for me, I found that I was getting things done more quickly, having less eye strain, thus leading to less headaches. So for me, that was a decision that I made that worked well for me. Um, and then other things to think about is, uh, do I need it for my computer? What is the cost? Um, it's always something very important to keep in mind. Um, and then the images on this slide are of a card size, like a credit card size magnifier that's illuminated. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. All right, so now we're going to talk about adaptive software. Um, there are many choices, just like with anything else. Um, you have magnification and screen reading software, and those options come with built-in or open source, open source or purchase. And then we have optical character recognition or OCR. And then um, I threw apps under software um, just because the next slide is going to talk about apps, but there are definitely certain, or certainly thousands of apps to choose from and many that address low vision. But I want to talk about um, screen magnification and screen reading options. Uh, so screen magnification, you have um, built in. So whether you're a Windows PC user or a Mac user, or you're accessing um, websites and things from your device, whether it be a smartphone, tablet, what have you, um, the other option would be a Chromebook. Um, so all of these options now come with accessibility features right out of the box. You just have to know where to go to find them. So um, for purchasing um, software, and I think somebody's in the waiting room, Asian A, sorry. For purchasing software, um, it's going to be sort of the bigger um, companies or products are gonna be JAWS and Zoom text. Um, and then another big one is NVDA, which is a screen reading software that's open source. Um, and then you have your built-in um, Microsoft narrator, or um, if it's Apple products, you have voiceover. And then with your Chromebook, you've got Chromevox built in. So there's all these different ways to access um, both screen magnification and um, screen reading technology. Um, OCR, I wanna talk about for just a moment. Um, there are apps that have OCR that we're gonna talk about, but essentially what that is, is it recognizes text as an image, if you will, and then it reads the text out loud. Um, and I use probably bad, or not bad, but not so great of words to describe that because sometimes when images are recognized as images, OCR will not read it. So it has to have a, a base to recognize the text um, and then it will speak it out loud. Um, for example, JAWS, the screen reader that I use, um, if I get an email, let's say it has a PDF that is not made accessible right out of the gate, I can then use the built-in OCR technology for JAWS and um, go through and have JAWS then read that for me. Um, with OCR technology, it's not always going to be 100% accurate. Uh, but it often comes very close. And we're gonna be talking quite a bit about OCR in the, the slides moving forward. So are there any questions before we move on? Okay, I'll go ahead and move to the next slide. All right, so I've titled this slide, my app for that. Uh, I certainly have a lot of apps that I use, but a lot of them actually have come built in 
to my device. So I am an iOS user. I am also familiar with Android, uh, but definitely my preferred access is through iOS. So there are, <clears throat> excuse me, there are built-in features already for your iOS and Android devices. So you find those typically in your settings and then under accessibility. So there are magn magnification options and in the resource sheet that is linked, um, and Asian A will throw that in the chat if it hasn't already been done, um, but there are um, many videos and links to on how to find this information that I'm referencing. Uh, but for example, the iOS already out of the box, it comes with a magnifier option, um, not only to magnify your screen, but also as a magnifier. So it uses the um, camera on your device and turns it into a magnifier so that you can then view larger images like you would using a magnifier using the screen of your device. Um, using voice assistants like um, Hey Siri and Hey Google. Um, I use Siri all the time. Um, and it often does a lot of what I need. And sometimes it is frustrating, <laughs> but it is a learning curve and you just kind of have to laugh it off sometimes. Um, it's saying somebody needs access to the resource guide. Um, I'll have to figure out why the resource guide is will um, change the access settings. Thank you for letting me know, Tracy. Um, and then there's built-in features such as speak selection. Uh, so if you are just new to, or maybe not new to, but don't prefer to listen to screen reading technology all the time, you can use features of speak selection and highlight specific texts that you want read out loud. Maybe it's a longer email or website and you're starting to feel the fatigue with your vision. Uh, and then you can just highlight that text and have it read out loud instead of having it read the whole thing like voiceover might. Um, some of my favorite apps here, I have listed Bard Mobile. Uh, I jokingly, so um, many, or not many, I shouldn't just assume that that was awful. <laughs> Some of you may have known that I've presented before at Libraries Without Walls and at the technology club meetings that happen once a month um, through the local library here, the Braille and Talking Book Library. But I was joking with Scott Norris, who's now the manager there, that when Bard first came out a handful of years ago, that I was going to need to join Readers Anonymous because I certainly read audiobooks prior to the release of Bard, um, but I certainly, now that I have it in an app on my phone, um, I go a little wild <laughs> with audiobooks. So I can't even tell you the last time I turned on my TV, I much prefer an audiobook and I typically access those through Bard Mobile and that's a free service through the National Library Service as long as you are signed up for the service. Um, and then I have a list of the Voice Dream suite of apps that are listed here, Voice Dream Reader, Writer, and Scanner. Um, Voice Dream Reader is the first one that I was introduced to as I was revisiting um, college. I decided to get my master's degree at Michigan State and the um, Resource Center for Persons with Disabilities is who introduced me to this app. Um, it was a way for me to get all of my accessible textbooks in an app on my phone and it was phenomenal. Um, it's one of my favorites and it's not that expensive of an app. So, and then some of the others I'm gonna talk about in the slides coming up, but another one that makes an appearance in the presentation is Seeing AI, and that's probably hands down my favorite app of all time. So 
Are there any other apps that folks use? Mary um, says in the UK, I use this resource from Manchester Charity Henshaws. Um, looks like a, a document that has a list of different resources. And no worries, Dawn, Dawn asked, do you prefer iOS because it has better apps and access or because you already preferred Mac or Apple over PC Android? So when I first joined the smartphone world at that time, even though I have people that are um, acquaintances of mine that would probably jokingly or not so jokingly argue otherwise, but at the time I joined and gosh, it's been about 10 years that I've been an iPhone user. And I would say when I first joined, so my first iPhone was the 4S. And, um, and that's when they came out with Siri. And at that time, I would say, in my opinion, that iOS had better access for low vision and blind users. And in my experience, they tend to have um, a greater number of apps that are accessible. That's not to say that Android is not accessible. And they have come, in my opinion, leaps and bounds in the 10 years that I've been an iPhone user. Um, Android certainly has a lot of great accessibility features as well. And what I love about Android is that the price point for their devices are typically quite a bit less, um, not with all cases, not if you get the fancier phones and things, but um, they do have some great access as well. Um, are there any other questions? And actually next month, um, I'll do a shameless plug. <laughs> Our next Tech Tuesday happening in August will be a look into um, Android versus iOS. So I would recommend that you all uh, take a look at that too. So next month, our next Tech Tuesday is Android versus iOS. We shall see who comes out the winner of that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not going to be just for low vision stuff. That will be for all things access for devices. So, in, right. in the chat, Dawn um, said that makes sense and matches what I've seen in special education apps and device services as well. Yes. And Mary, um, thank you for that resource. I just took a quick glance at um, the different things on the list, and it looks like it will be really helpful. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move to the next slide. All right, now here comes the fancy, fancy stuff. Sort of. We're almost there. <laughs> um, ways to identify. And this slide just has the, the bullet points. And then I'm going to go into detail about each of these. So we have methods and strategies standalone devices and apps. And like I said, I'll go into each of these in the next slides. All right, so ways to identify using methods and strategies. Um, I like to ask, and I, I think I did, I hope I did at the beginning of this, what are some folks favorite AT, um, what are some low tech things that you use that you found to be helpful? And someone reminded me that rubber bands can actually be used as a form of AT. And so I have it highlighted here. So rubber bands, Sharpies, and um, index cards are a great way if you experience low vision um, to identify things. So for example, um, if you use just a rubber band, Let's say you have a rubber band 
just one rubber band around your green beans. And then you place two rubber bands around corn. And maybe you have three rubber bands, and I'm not gonna suggest going more than three, but maybe you have three rubber bands around mixed vegetables. That's just a, a very simplified example. Um, but that's just one way that you can use rubber bands as a way to identify. Furthermore, if you add the Sharpie in the index card, you can then write with a Sharpie larger than the can might be, and then use the rubber band to secure the index card on that food item, just as an example. Really low tech solutions here. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about using RFID or radio frequency ID in the next slide, but um, there's another way that you can use rubber bands and index cards using a pen friend as an example. Um, using organizational totes and having specific spaces and places for things. And I am terrible at this. <laughs> I say that I am organized not by design, but by necessity. Uh, so it seems like the couple of things that I'm always losing and asking my 13 year old son for is, have you seen my black shoes or, you know, whatever. I have gotten better, but I'm certainly, this is a judgment free zone. <laughs> I am not good at keeping track of where I put my shoes. You think I would be by now, but I'm not. And then um, my keys. I actually moved to a keyless entry system for my home because I was constantly losing my house key. So, um, and then my phone. But um, if you are a more organized person, um, totes can be a great way to organize things. So. For example, if you have that stack of mail pile up and you have low vision, um, what to do with it all. So if you have somebody coming over just for a moment, um, what I used to do before I use the current methods that I use is I had a drawer that I had sectioned off into three sections. So having um, bills as an example that were just received that I need to keep and then bills that were just paid as another section, and then like coupons and other things that were valuable but um, didn't need my immediate attention. Um, so th that's what I mean by organization and having totes and things. Um, and then safety pins in fabric paint. So using a safety pin method, you can color code your clothing. Um, let's say that you have one safety pin on your tag or wherever you choose to put it for items that are black, two safety pins that are for items that are blue, and so on and so forth. You can use your own method or you can use the 3D fabric paint to work out a method that works for you as well. So those are just some basic examples. And I'm gonna move on to the next slide. So here are some standalone devices and these we have in our inventory, the Colorino being one of them. That's a color identifier um, available for demonstration and loan. This is a device that you hold next to your clothing and it will tell you the color. It's pretty accurate. It's not 100% accurate, but it comes pretty close. Um, and then the other function of that is actually it helps identify a light source. So if someone is totally blind and they don't have light perception, there's a feature on it that helps with identifying the light source. Um, and then we have the pen friend, which is um, basically you put a sticker, an RFID sticker on an item and then you can record a digital recording of what that item is. So you might need cited assistance for that. Um, but then once it's recorded, you bring the pen back to that sticker and then it will read that recording out loud. And then we have the OrCam. We just got this in our lending library. Um, and I have a video on that, so I'm not gonna talk much about it, but it's a way for um, folks to identify things. 
Um, okay, so here is the final way that I have to identify things. And this is through apps. So someone mentioned Be My Eyes. This is an app that uses volunteers and it uses your device with the use of your camera. So you can go into the app, request a volunteer, and then you hold your camera up and you ask what, so if you're looking at mail, if you're in a grocery store, what have you, the volunteer can help you with that process. Um, seeing AI or Google Lookout would be the equivalent. Um, that has many different channels, they call them. So you can read text with that. You can identify paper money, um, a document reader, a barcode scanner. It has many features and that's just another way. And those are free apps, by the way. IRA, A-I-R-A, -A, that is an app that you can do a subscription service or they do have um, five minutes of free interaction per day. Um, but this uses trained visual interpreters. So it's different than a volunteer. Um, and again, I have a video on that, so I'm not gonna explain too much, but it's another way to get visual feedback from your device. And then I have on here as an app, even though it's technically called a skill when you're talking about Alexa is the Alexa show and tell. So if you have an Alexa show, you can, and that's an Alexa that has a screen and a camera built in, and you can hold a device up to your show. So for example, I have an Alexa show in my kitchen. And if I don't have my phone readily available or other identifying methods readily available, I'll hold it up and say, Alexa, what am I holding? And um, this isn't my preferred method, but it does work. Um, and it will give you feedback on what it is you're holding. All right, so I am gonna have, I'm gonna stop screen share and I'm gonna have Asian A play two videos. Um, and Asian A, if you wanna first maybe play the Ira video and then we'll move into OrCam. And we might go about five minutes over. Ira, artificial intelligence, remote assistance. We provide access to visual information through a smartphone app available on iOS or Android, connecting people with professional visual interpreters. Let's take a look at how it works. You've entered an IRA access network. First time explorers can begin using the service by downloading the official IRA app on any smartphone. Download IRA app. At just the touch of a button, explorers are connected to remotely located, highly trained agents. By using information in an explorer's environment, agents are immersed in an explorer's world and can see what they see. Thanks for calling Ira, this is Emily. How can I help you? Well, I'm at Target and the only grocery I am in need was cream cheese. I'm looking for chive and onion, salmon okay. or jalapeno. So this one is strawberry, but chive and onion is directly above it on the shelf. That's chive and onion. Hi, Jennifer. I'm here at Target, and I'm currently making an exchange. Do you mind just describing what you see happening in front of me? In front of you, there seems to be like a light blue box. Associates on either side of you, but they seem to be talking to other customers. Do you mind directing me to the food area? Okay, sure. Your path is clear. You're just passing a bunch of uh, cashiers on your left-hand side. Hi, Marissa. We're at Target. We're shopping for Halloween decorations. And I was looking, actually looking to see if you got any of those, like, special party bowls. These ones all seem to be more Christmas light style. Go ahead and look to the okay. right just a little bit. I'll check the other half. So it's a bulb that projects images. What about this here? Now that one has actual individual skulls, so they're like skull lights. I kind of do like these lights, so I wonder how much they are. It is $10 oh. for one. Victor, hi, I'm at a self-checkout line and I'd like your help trying to read it. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it looks like you're gonna stage your items on the left ring them up and then drop them into the bagging area on the right. Yeah, that's bad. If you flip it over and the back, 
Yeah, that one, right? There, there we, we go. We got it. Okay. All right, I think we should be good. Thank oh. you. Okay, I'm at Target. I want to know what color this bag is right here. That's a nice bag. Uh, it's got white yep. uh, textured leather on the ends, and then the uh -huh. through the body, uh, the lower part of the body of the bag is a very light pink. My hands are kind of full, so I was gonna see if I could find a hand basket. That way, I can put this stuff in it. You're gonna turn right now, and now you're back in front of the store. If you turn to your left, Two feet in front of you, there's a stack of hand baskets. Perfect. This unlocks a world that is not always accessible for all people. Social distancing is expected in many places, and many of the social distancing cues are based on visual indicators. And this presents a potential challenge for millions of individuals who are blind or low vision. IRA is a tool that can provide the information needed to follow good social distancing and other safety practices. You're about to experience what it's like to work with an IRA agent to maintain social distance. These people are moving through public spaces. Some are using canes while others work with guide dogs. Thanks for calling Ira. This is Emily. What would you like to do today? We are here at the grocery store. There I am with my mask. Yes. Yay. <laughs> There's a man entering the store about 10 feet in front of you on the right. Is there a bunch of people in line in front of me? Or? There's a gentleman six feet in front of you talking to a bank teller. It looks like he's finishing up and then it'll be your turn. I'd like to go into Walgreens and find some Tylenol for arthritis. Can you help me do that? I sure can. At the end of this hey, aisle, is the, can you go ahead the line starts the video. Feet. Thank you. And then we can go into the last video. And I'd like to welcome folks to stay on if they have any questions. So this next video will be describing OrCam. Introducing OrCam MyEye, the most advanced wearable AI for vision impairment. The tiny device magnetically snaps onto the side of glasses and instantly reads text to you from any surface. All you have to do is point. White chocolate cookies. All Cam's innovative smart reading feature works instantly and discreetly. Start smart reading. Read me the headlines. Found two headlines. First result, or can my eye to name to times list of one? Second result, Genesis Prize Foundation. Read me first article. Or can my eye to an Israeli maid system to... Or can my eye can also assist with your orientation. What's in front of me? One door to your left and one door to your right. Identifying objects and helping with your mobility. What's in front of me? One person is in front of you, one empty chair to your right. Seamlessly recognize faces. Matt Jansen. Money notes. $50. Products and more. All in real time, without the need for an internet connection. Lightweight, intuitive operation in a device the size of a finger. OrCam MyEye is used by tens of thousands of people in 25 languages and 50 countries helping them to live more independently and improving their quality of life. OrCam MyEye, personal AI technology with a life-changing impact. All right, thank you. Um, just a few things while we wrap it up. Um, there was an issue with the resource guide link. So we'll go ahead and send that out in an email if you've registered. Thank you. And you'll get access to that resource guide. Uh, and then we also will have um, this recording available as well. Um, and if folks have to go, I, I thank you for your time today. Um, but I also welcome, if you have time and you want to stay on and you have questions, um, I am available to uh, answer questions. So I did add the updated link. Um, oh, perfect.
to click on that that's outside of our organization <laughs> to let me to make sure that that works. Um, for you all. And then I'm also going to enter a link for, to our survey. Um, if you could please fill that out, give us some feedback, let us know um, how today went. Um, if you have suggestions for future um, Tech Tuesdays with us or other um, devices that you would like to see and learn more about, um, I will put that link in the chat as well. And then the resource guide also has emails and contact information for myself, um, Kelly, and the AT team. And there is the link to our survey. Thank you everyone for joining today. Thanks, Angela. Thank you, Angela. Well, Brian did have a question. I'm not sure if they're still on. Oh, yep. Okay. So is there AT that could help when attending a live theater performance? Very good question. Unable to find URL for survey. Oh, <laughs> one second. Our links are just working so well today. Um, in terms of live theater performances, uh, I'm not sure, Brian, where you're located. I will speak highly of our um, Wharton Center that's local here to East Lansing. They do have audio described live theater performances. Um, they just are at specific times and you have to check to see when those are. Um, I would say maybe, I don't know if anyone has experience using Be My Eyes or Ira. Um, so I know that, so there's typically a cost with IRA, a subscription, um, but many places have opted to cover the cost of that for um, people visiting. So if you go to a conference, for example, that conference might sponsor IRA so you can open up the app and it will recognize that you're at that conference and they won't charge a fee for you to use the service. So I would imagine that it would be very beneficial for theaters and you know different um, businesses to subscribe to IRA. And then um, the visual interpreter would be able to describe that as it was happening, perhaps. Um, did you mean next month? Yes. So, okay. Yep. Mary. So I will put in the chat as well, um, the link to, um, our next Tech Tuesday. Um, and Mary, you're from the UK, right? So, um, feel free to choose a um, county and then we'll update that information once we see your registration. And the Tech Tuesday for next month, August 9th, is the Android um, versus iOS Apple Tech Tuesday. And the link is now in the chat. Oh, great. We have two folks. From the oh, UK. great. Thanks, Samantha, for joining. OK, great. Thanks, Erin. Erin <laughs> um, said the links are working now. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Um, yep. <laughs> Thanks so much. Excellent training. I learned a lot of valuable information. Thank you, Tim. You are both welcome. Great job. Thank you. I'll be seeing you next month, too. Yes. I'm, <laughs> I, I just really, really looking forward to that, too, Kelly. We're still working on our other self-advocate, but I think I think we got somebody here from one of okay. our provide one of our providers. But we'll catch up with you. Um, definitely ahead of time and give you like some idea, you know, what to expect too. But great job today. Um, my, my colleague Shane, who will also be with us, um, got sidetracked, was going to jump on today. But um, what is the one you're doing? What's the next one you guys are doing? Android versus iOS. 
Okay. Let me take a look at that. Yeah. Cool. It'll be okay. fun. We'll, we'll have some banter going back and forth, I imagine, about which one's better. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, my my son's a big Android. Me and my daughter are both iOS. You know, there's it'll be interesting to see how you have it outlined or, how you know, like just how you framed it. So, yeah. All right. Well, wow. Dinner time, Samantha. Ooh. <laughs> Enjoy. Have a good evening. All right. I am going to stop the recording.